Hey everybody, Dr. Green here again. I'm just going to go through and show you what it looks like to use a makefile with Docker. Uh, many of you may not be familiar with Docker, <clears throat> but if you are not, I can tell you little bits about it and show you exactly what it is. Um, all you have to do um, is search for Docker. You will find it very quickly. You'll see things like Docker Hub. Uh, the easiest place to go is docker.com and you can read through lots of their use cases and products. Uh, Docker Desktop is generally what we will use in this class if we are using it, so go ahead and install that. But fundamentally what Docker does and what Docker, De Docker Desktop allows us to do is to create a self-contained environment that stays the same regardless of location. That means that if I use it, it is the same here with me as it is when you use it, as it is when other people use it. And the way we do that is to build containers. So you'll see I have my project over here. Uh, I have all the code from my previous makefile project, except I've put it inside a code directory. Uh, so you'll see here I have a code directory, I have a Docker file, and I have a readme. Hey, this Docker file is really the new thing that you're going to see. Um, I've built this and it is built on Alpine Linux to keep it as small as possible. Uh, I have some commands in here you can run through, but basically what this does is it adds what we need, make, G++, and bash to our installation uh, inside our container. It mounts the code volume uh, and it starts the bash shell. Now the way we use this, if you can see in my readme file, you create docker, then you run this command locally, docker build dot, which means the current working directory, minus t, give it a tag, um, and my Docker Hub username is rgreen13, and what I'm going to build is a container called CS3540. Now you'll see when I hit enter here, you're going to see a lot. It doesn't show you very much um, as the normal process because I've already built this container. Yours will be a little slower, um, but it won't be, you know, that much. You can always see what's going on. You can look at Docker images things like that. Um, now what I can show you is if I show you this image, you can see it's a 160 megabyte image. It was built five minutes ago. It has a specific tag. Uh, it's using the latest edge. Okay? You don't need to know a whole lot about this right now, except that we'll be using it. The nice thing here is that I can even use Docker on Windows if I don't know how to set up my compilation environment. Okay? So the way this works is I will then run this command. Uh, in Windows, I believe you can run this on PowerShell. On Linux or Mac, you just run it right from the command line. So this means docker run uh, minus v use the present working directory slash code and attach that to the slash code directory within my container. Do it in an interactive environment, that's the i, with that has the tag rgreen13 slash cs3540. That is the container that I just built. Now you'll see when I hit enter, it brings me to this bash prompt. I am now inside the Docker container. I can change to my code directory and everything is there. If I go to default, I have a make file. I can type make all, right? You'll see this is the same thing that we were doing before. Uh, and if you look in here in code, in bin, we have fib.exe, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I'm in good shape. I can go here, I can go into bin, I can do dot slash fib.exe, it runs. Um, I am in good shape. And this is a self-contained development environment uh, that I can now push around and pass around to my coworkers and my colleagues and my teammates so that everybody's using the same thing. You can build these containers with Python, with Java, with any technology you want. And if you are looking for some more advanced containers and other containers, uh, what you can do is you just go to hub.docker.com. You'll see I have a variety of containers here already that I've built some for parallel programming. Uh, Bash with G++ is very similar to the one that I built now. You can look at this. Uh, you can see, hey, I got this here. It gives you the tags. I have a README, uh, which is basically exactly what we'd use in this class, except it's set up for OpenMP. Uh, so we have a lot of this stuff, and it lets us push these things around. Um, I have other things for web development uh, and for some other projects I've used as well. So this is how you use a very basic Docker file with a basic make file with a C++ project. Hope that helps.